It's time for us to kick off this year's Android Dev Summit. Bienvenidos a todos los que están acompañando en este momento. Vamos a ver qué onda con esto. En el keynote de este Android Dev Summit. This year's summit is all about building excellent apps across devices. And coming up in today's keynote, we'll get a peek into the world of Team Android, our very own Android Avengers. And the tools that they're building to help developers heed the call to restore order and stability to apps across the Android verse. Speaking of which, I've Vamos created a, ver, a team to a superhero alter ego show. of my own. From now on, you can refer to me as Captain Curiosity, traveling down YouTube rabbit holes at the speed of why? Um, Houston. <laughs> Que le están dando esta, tema, esta uh, temática de, de avent Jetpack. aventuras en el espacio. De hecho, para los que no lo sabían, había una forma de crearse uno de estos avatars. Estaba disponible en la página de Android Dev Summit. Together. I helped. <laughs> Whoa! That was wild. Heck yeah! Hey, let me keep the laser glove. All right. <laughs> so coming up, we'll be hearing about how to build excellent apps using the latest tools in modern Android development, like Compose, as well as the latest news on updates to help you extend your app across devices to new form factors. But first, kicking off this keynote, we'll hear from oh, Sagar, who will share with you some of the si updates on where the Android team is headed this year. <laughs> and yo. it all starts right now, right here, from our fortress of Coditude. Oh, you're my hero. <laughs> oh my god, it's cold. Mm. <laughs> Better. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today hey, Luis, at the 2021 Andrew Android Andrew Dev Summit. I hope you and your loved ones are staying safe. Vamos and the team que, and I are really looking forward to the day we could all meet again in person. Dev Summit. I wanted to give a special hello to our GDE and GDG communities and women tech maker ambassadors who are okay. championing Android and joining us from around the world. Los While the last year and a half a has brought ambasos, many challenges, one of the bright spots has been seeing the way developers like you have responded. The app experiences that you build have helped people around the world in ways we couldn't have imagined. Let's take a look at a few apps created by Android developers in our community. Starting with Gaston Sayen and Android GDE from Cordoba, Argentina. Gaston created a food delivery app called Ulala that enables users to get food delivered to their loved ones all over Argentina. Joe Birch from the UK built an accessible guitar to help the mute, deaf, and blind learn to play the guitar using a combination of a built-in speaker, screen, and a braille reader. Interesante. And Kushbu Agarwal started an Indian healthcare startup called Zyla, which provides personalized care to patients with chronic illnesses. Kushbu, Gaston, and Joe are great examples of focusing on the user, understanding their needs, and then building experiences to delight them. This spirit is what drives us at Google and our work on Android. At the end of the day, our goal is to build a platform that we and all of you love to use every day, and one that billions of people around the world will also love. We're very excited about the advancements we made this year on Android. With Android 12, we've taken a user-first design approach that is centered all around you. Smartphones are deeply personal, and Android 12 helps the entire phone adapt to you with Material U design language. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest design change in Android's history where we've rethought the entire experience, from the colors to the shapes to the light and motion. The result is a more expressive, dynamic, mm -hmm. and personal experience than ever before. We'll share some news tal, on how you as developers can use this in just a bit. Todo. Android 12 also focuses on security by default, and that's part of a much larger investment across Android and Play in the security, safety, and trust space. 
With this release, we introduced Android's private computer for PCC, an open source, secure environment that is isolated from the rest of the operating system and apps, powering critical features such as smart reply, live caption, and now playing. We'll also continue to increase our investment in Google Play Protect, which now scans over 100 billion apps every day for potential risks. Over the past couple of years, we've continued to give users more controls and transparency when installing or using an application. Our next step will be the launch of a new data safety section in Google Play that informs a user of what data is collected and why before they install an app. All of us have a critical responsibility to our users to maintain their trust. When they are happy, we all succeed. Another big theme for us on Android is helping all of your devices work better together. Based on all of your feedback, we've recognized there's more we can do to help experiences that extend beyond the phone to an entire ecosystem of devices, including wearables, TV, and cars. I'll share just a few examples of our efforts from the last few months. Today, one out of three smartphone users have a fitness tracker or smartwatch. Recognizing that, we have taken our collaboration with Samsung and mobile to the next level. Claro. and launched an Hablan entirely new su, version of Wear OS. We also Samsung brought richer, more immersive app experiences a, to Wear OS with este, Google Play, YouTube Music, Google Pay, Spotify, Strava, Calm, and much, much more. And on TV, we have just mm, launched one of our most estás? requested features to date. Your Android phone has remote control features built in that can now be used for any of your Google TV or Android TV devices. We have also made major improvements to Android Auto, for you to stay on track during your drive, including support for more app categories like navigation, EV charging, and parking. Finally, over the past 18 months, we've seen people around the world buy and use Android tablets, Chrome OS devices, and foldables more than ever before. In fact, there are over 250 million active large screen Android devices. And last year, Chrome OS grew 92% five times the rate of bueno, the PC soy, soy market, de la idea de que no, making no Chrome OS the fastest growing desktop OS. With schools being online and individuals working from home, de, having a large screen un, device mar, that's easier marcas, to use for extended periods of time is essential. Estar dando la hora son los We'd like to thank all los, of you who have invested in making your apps work great on large screens. And we've also heard your feedback that you want us to go bigger on Android with large screens. So I've already said, Android 12 is one of our biggest releases in history. But today I'm excited to announce we're going even bigger. We're adding additional support for large screens in Android 12. Diana yeah. will be joining in a bit to share more details on this news. With that, I want to kick it over to my team. We'll be focusing on two big themes today. No por nada, First, pero eso de darlo como un gran anuncio si ya se veía venir. Eso tenía que ser sí o sí con Android 12. To help you stay more si no productive, con la gracia de los foldables. So you can focus on building great applications. And second, helping you extend those apps across devices. As users want to experience the apps you all build on all the form factors they use on a daily basis. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today for building amazing experiences and for inspiring us to make Android better every single day. Hey Sebas, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Bienvenido. My name is Moi Adeyemi and I am a software engineer at Twitter and the Android tech lead for the search team. I'm also an Android GDE. I studied computer science with maths um, and I learned a bit of programming fundamentals there. But my curiosity wasn't fully picked until I saw some apps that my friends built and I wanted to learn how to build that too. Being an Android GDE means that I now have a broader platform to contribute to the Android developer community. For modern Android development, the three things I use the most are Kotlin, Android Studio, and Compose. I started using Kotlin in 2017, some months before it became announced at Google I.O. as the official language for Android development. I remember that I was very excited about that announcement that I gave a talk at the Google I.O. Extended event in Lagos, introducing other developers to Kotlin. I love Kotlin because it's a lot less verbose. I like that immutability and null safety checks are built in and it's a lot more fun to work with. Okay, 
Bueno, One of my favorite eh, teachers of Android no Studio está hablando is Aliyah Inspector. I like it because sometimes I need to make changes to another portion of the code base that my team doesn't own. A, and because of the size of the code base la, here, it's difficult to know sometimes exactly what classes you need to change. With Aliyah Inspector, I can easily get an ID for one of the elements and that reduces Hola, Roger, the amount of time I need to search. Bienvenido, bienvenido. I've been using Compose in my personal projects for a while now because it reduces the amount of time required to create a new project. And and because we no longer need to have separate XML files. In Compose, I'm most excited about the lazy bueno, row slash column feature, which has the place of recycler view and drastically reduced the amount of complexity required ya to work with desde hace un tiempo atrás. Some teams at Twitter are already using Compose in production, and I am excited for more teams to start using it too. Y claro, claro, hablan de, de el uso de Compose en producción, pero... Es interesante cuando te pintan las cosas muy bonitas, cuando tienes aplicaciones mucho más complejas y hacer una migración a Compose no es tan sencilla como parece, ¿no? Entonces hay, hay una serie de cosas que considerar. Understanding how you work and how we can make our tools and services even better, so you can be more productive and focus on expressing your ideas. We called our expanding collection of development tools, APIs, language and distribution technologies, modern Android development. For short, and is the combination of 10 years of building Android developer tools and best practices. It's opinionated and powerful <laughs> for fast, easy development, enabling you to create better apps that run across billions of devices. Modern Android development starts with great programming language support. Simpático el icono que le han puesto. Officially supporting <laughs> Kotlin is an example of an investment that came directly from listening to the community. You love it? We love it? I love it. Today, of the top 1,000 apps, 87% contain Kotlin code. And even more, 40% use coroutines, our recommended solution for asynchronous work. Nos nos New this year, we have our Lifecycle Aware Coroutines APIs, which are now Use Repeat on Lifecycle and Flow with Lifecycle to stop collecting from the UI when it's not needed. But we're not stopping here. We're working on expanding our guidance on coroutines, flows, and app architecture. Kotlin Symbol Processing, KSP, our replacement for Kotlin Annotation Processing Tool, KAPT, Ooh, is now stable. Un, KSP offers Kotlin similar processing. functionality to KAPT, but with faster compilation time and direct access to Kotlin language constructs. Room saw two times improvement in compilation time when switching to KSP. And we're working on moving Dagger and Health to it as well. Our latest Jetpack libraries are built from the ground up using Kotlin. And one of the most exciting libraries right now is Jetpack Compose, Android's new modern native UI toolkit to help you build better apps faster. Compose is stable and ready for use in production. We build Compose to interoperate with your existing apps, and it's been exciting hay, seeing hay the community adopting it. Está, no están en condiciones fact, de adoptar Compose ahora mismo, salvo que se pongan a construir cosas nuevas. Even the Play Store itself Pero uses hay it. forma it's de poder ir llevando las aplicaciones a, a un estado They're en el que puedan adoptar Compose. Quizás uno de los secretos, justo conversando, aquí debo dar like crédito a mi equipo de trabajo y eh, empresa. Si conseguimos aplicar el concepto de uni unidireccional so data flow con eventos y estados dentro de nuestras aplicaciones, y también el eh, este concepto de Atomic Design, pueden ayudarnos muchísimo a preparar nuestras More aplicaciones para poder este adoptar later. Compose. We've been busy since the 1 release, building in the open and talking with you to ensure we're solving your problems. Today, Compose 1.1 goes better with a range of performance improvements, new features, and tooling. We continued expanding the APIs with features like lazy layout animations, stretch over scroll claro, for Android 12, improved touch target sizing, and more. Compose, pues We've added faster refresh for live edits to live literal values. So your changes show up on device, emulator, or preview as you type. We've also added Compose support to Android Studio's Layout Inspector, adding Compose-specific features like inspecting the semantics tree. But we're not done yet. We have so many features planned. Check out the public roadmap to see what's coming next. Now, we want to show you how this looks like in action. So over to Nick for a demo. Thanks, Florina. Here's an app we've been working on to create our own Jetpack Heroes. 
The UI is entirely made with Jetpack Compose, so it's been fast and easy to build. But don't just take my word for it. Let me show you how. For example, I've been wanting to see a list of our yeah, hero friends and all the Android bueno, devs. No sepa mucho de estas cosas, en realidad, you can quickly sabía. iterate on an individual list item using Android Studio's preview. No hay Here I have three o sea, previews si of tú, this friend item. Eso es todo un tema, porque si, si tú constantemente has estado actualizando y has estado al pendiente de los de los anuncios y todo, en realidad, mucho de lo que están hablando aquí ya, ya, ya se incluye aquí la vida. I can change padding values and the image size and see them update immediately. This works both on the device and in the preview. Live editing of literals produces a really fast iteration cycle, keeping me very productive. When I'm happy with an individual list item, Compose makes it so, so easy to display a list of items. To build our list of friends, we can use the lazy column composable to call our friends composable in an items block. And that's it. No more layouts, adapters, and view holders to manage. Well, one of my absolute favorite things about Compose is how much easier animations are to write. I want the items in this list to animate in. I can simply wrap the list in an animated visibility composable, which will animate the entire list entrance. Okay, ahora están... I can also okay, use the animated enter exit modifier on individual items. Sencilla. And here, sí, let's add a no staggered animation. No I can switch my list con to use cabeza. items index to give me the index of each item. And then in the modifier, use this index to customize the slide in entrance animation. And like this, each item will enter from further out and then come together. Hey, Let's Juan take a look in the estás? experimental bienvenido, animation inspector. We can play back and scrub through the entire transition. Pretty nice. Bueno, sin duda, el Compose tooling, also uses si spring-based animations lo by default, eso... so it's easy to configure the Hay animation que... to add a slight bounce by reducing the damping. Hopefully this shows how marvelous Compose is for making you feel super productive. Over to Andre to tell us more about Material U. Material U is a radical new design vision focused on delivering experiences that are personal for every style, accessible for every need, and adaptive for every screen. Starting today with Jetpack Compose, realizing this vision is even easier. In Android 12, the Material U experience is front and center. From the spirited shapes of the new widgets to the expressive use of motion and large type on the home screen, the updated visual design is fresh, alive, and original. The days of one size fits all are long gone. People are eager to express their individuality and are seeking more personalized experiences in everyday life. For me, the most exciting thing about moving into a new home is going to the paint store and finding that color that will best represent my style and make me smile when I unlock the door. And when I get a new phone, the first thing I do is set my wallpaper. And so do about 60% of Android users. I typically choose some abstract art or a photo of my dog, something personal. By building a dynamic color palette from a device wallpaper, Material U creates a tailored experience that's reflective of the user's personality and applies it thoughtfully throughout their Android device experience. To get a feel for apps that support dynamic color, Let's take a look claro at how we've it to the updated Google si Apps. Una, the Gmail, Calendar, and Calculator apps are great diseño, examples su, of how we can maintain the recognizability plan, of the apps and keep them feeling diseño, unique. Un we've updated the styling and improved the accessibility of our navigation components este with concepto, new state indicators and color mappings so your apps can be optimized to reach more people on more devices. Now that you've seen what apps with dynamic color feel like, Let's talk about how to make them. Today, we're releasing a new version of our Material Components libraries for Android views and a preview of our Material U support in Jetpack Compose, which will help you quickly and easily create amazing personalized app experiences. All of the updated components, design guidelines, and developer documentation can be found on the new Material Design 3 microsite at material.io. We understand this is a new way of thinking of color. In order to support your team, we're releasing Material Theme Builder, a new tool to visualize dynamic color in your app designs. With its built-in code export, it's easy to migrate to Material's new color system and take advantage of dynamic color. Material Theme Builder is available as a web tool and Figma plugin, which you can use today. 
all of these great Material U features are already available on Pixel devices with Android 12. And we're excited to roll it out to more devices in the Android ecosystem soon. Back to Nick to see this in action. Uh, material design and compose, two of my absolute favorite things, teaming up to make it fast and easy to build beautiful Material U apps. I've got just the friend that can help update our app. Let me get an assist from our designer, Yasmin. Hey, Yas. Hey, Nick. I saw the material design logo in the sky and came as fast as I could. I've been playing around with the material theme builder and seeing how dynamic color may look within our app. I didn't know there was so much color in the whole galaxy. Applying dynamic color is going to give our app the extra boost it needs. But first, we need to migrate our themes to Material Design 3 to take advantage of all these beautiful colors. Let's create a custom theme. We can use the primary container color to highlight primary actions like this fab, which is now over 50% more fabulous, and use tertiary container color to heighten attention to an element, such as these power boosts. This is looking great. With its built-in code export, Nick can easily implement the new Material 3 theme and ensure dynamic color maps beautifully across our UI. Nick, are you ready to implement this? Yes. After adding the Material 3 alpha dependency to our app, we can update our theme composable to work with dynamic color. We we'll use dynamic color when running on Android 12, or at least S, and update our theme logic to use dynamic dark or light color scheme functions to retrieve a color scheme extracted from the device's wallpaper. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to do to update my theme to use dynamic colors. The updated material free components use these colors. So depending on the device's wallpaper, then the app gets completely different feel to go with it. Now, in the material you videos, I noticed a fun wiggling slider. While this isn't part of a material free library, this is Compose. Let's build it. I can fork the slider component and alter the rendering logic to draw a wiggly path instead of a straight line. What's more, Compose makes it super easy to even animate this. Let's alter the path using remember infinite transition to add a wiggle. And we can see this right here in studio in the interactive preview. Toru has made our app more personal and more fun. Back to you, Flo. Now to my personal favorite, Jetpack. We've been working to add okay. the features Entonces, you've been asking us for. Navigation brings multiple backs and support. Que, no code updates needed. Make sure you use the latest version. Work Manager, our recommended solution for persistent work, makes it easier to handle Android 12 background restrictions, adding support for expedited jobs. And Room adds auto migration and multi map relations. All right. Now that I've got the mic, no, let no, me go no, deeper sí, in room auto migration. Sí, the most common database operations can be handled Igual out of the box, like adding columns or tables or primaries. All you have to do is add an auto migration definition. For some changes like renaming a column or a table, you'll have to lend a hand and implement an auto migration spec. So we write four lines of code, not just one. Okay, I can talk about room all day, but let me tell you what's in store for two of our newer libraries. Data Store, our coroutine based replacement for shared preferences, has reached 1.0. Whether you prefer Preferences Data Store to store key value pairs or Proto Data Store to store typed objects, you will use Kotlin coroutines and okay, Flow pues, to store data asynchronously, proto, consistently, proto data and store transactionally. Para... So now that Data Store reached 1.0, Start using it in production. Sí. Macro Benchmark, a tool to measure and improve startup and frame estable. performance, edit simplified Inclusive and more accurate frame timing, también. and compatibility back to Android M. Finally, because we know that understanding your app's performance is important, we added support for profilable APKs in Android Studio to help you measure timings more accurately without the performance degradation of debuggable apps. Whew, so from Material U and Compose to the latest Jetpack libraries, that was a lot of modern Android development features to help you be productive, building excellent apps for your users. Now, back to you, Kari. Thanks, Lorena. Wow, all those updates to Compose and Android mean more apps that are, in fact, excellent. So while Team Compose was showing off their new <laughs> bug blasters, I've been busy building a little gadget of my own. Check out the Carry 9000. Time for a beta test. Huh. Still working out the um, 
bugs. <laughs> anyway, we'll check back with Nick and Yasmin in a bit. Plus chat with Diana about how Android is helping developers build excellent apps across any device. Okay, va a ser interesante ir revisando estas cosas But para first, ver qué tan estable está. Pero first, Spotify will share with us how they've used Android to optimize their apps for wearables, large screens and more. Hmm. Looks like we're going to need a bigger power supply. Wait. I have a laser glove. <laughs> Throughout recent decades, technology has made music more and more accessible. It feels so strange to like hold the medium in your hand like this. It's so retro. With the technology advances that we've been seeing, we're moving closer to our mission. We want our users to be able to listen wherever they are, whatever they're doing. That's why with Google, we've developed a seamless experience across screen sizes and devices. We have a design paradigm that we call adaptive UI, modeled after Google's material design. This allows us to build for any shape and size of screen, so users have a completely uninterrupted listening experience. One great example <laughs> is Spotify <laughs> with Android Auto. <laughs> to build Spotify for the car, we've had to balance the rich listening experience against our user safety. Sí, igual, es, igual es un reto para muchos desarrolladores el cambio de, de eh, pasar de XML y, y toda esta forma de, de desarrollar UI a Compose. Entonces, claro, se tiene que trabajar en mejorar mucho la parte del tooling, las herramientas que se usan y todo ello para que la transición no sea tan, tan compleja. No matter if you're listening from your mobile device, the speaker in your home, TV, gaming console, Wear OS allows you to change what you're listening to directly from your wrist, tying the Spotify ecosystem together. Technology has changed over the decades, and that's made music and audio more accessible than ever. We're finding a new level of human creativity where people are able to express themselves in ways that we couldn't have imagined a few decades ago. And that's a very exciting place to be. A user's digital life includes multiple connected devices, and they expect all of their apps to transition seamlessly between them. Like we saw with Spotify, truly exceptional app experiences are no longer about developing for a single device, but across devices, building for the entire Android ecosystem. We are making it easier than ever to extend your app across form factors with some big announcements to unfold today. But right. first, let's talk about how Android is thriving across auto, TV, wearables, and more. Android Auto is now available in over 100 million cars and is supported by nearly every major car manufacturer. Our newest in-car experience, Android Automotive OS, will be available on cars from top brands, including Ford, General Motors, Renault, Volvo Cars, and most recently announced, Honda. To support this growing ecosystem, we recently introduced the Android for Cars app library, which allows developers of navigation, EV charging, and parking apps to bring these capabilities to Android for Cars. Okay. We're also excited about the growth for the Android TV OS, which now has more than 80 million monthly active devices globally. As Sagar mentioned, To help phones work better together with TVs, we've built remote control features for Android TV apps directly into Android phones and through the Google TV app. Bueno, que creo It's que a great time to integrate your media apps with the Android TV OS. And when it comes to wearables, at I.O., we announced the launch of the new Wear OS, and it's become the platform's most anticipated release ever. The new Wear OS, powered by Samsung, has since launched on the Galaxy Watch 4 series with great success. Mm. Many developers have created helpful experiences for the latest version of Wear OS, and we're looking forward to richer, more La immersive app que, experiences que like what we're seeing va, from va Strava, Spotify, and Help. And they're already seeing higher engagement no from the Now de este on Wear OS, tiles Wear are OS. enabled for devices like the Galaxy Watch 4, providing predictable, glanceable access to information and quick actions. Take this example from Calm, giving users more entry points to access their app. The API is in beta for you to try out now. You ask for more modern Android development, and we're now making it easier than ever to develop on Android's smallest screen. 
Compose makes building UIs so much faster and easier. So we're bringing Compose support to Wear OS. You can design your app with familiar mm, UI components so adapted for the watch. After several alpha releases, we're now in a full developer preview with new samples and documentation to help you get started. Try it out and give us your feedback before we finalize APIs during beta. Even more modern Android, we've also been working on new Jetpack APIs and capabilities, like support for curved text and new health services. With these are a set of Kotlin first APIs rewritten from the ground up. These are going to beta and stable, so the time mm -hmm. to migrate to them you is now. In partnership with Samsung, there's a new watch face studio, which enables you to create watch faces in a WYSIWYG editor. So watch you see is watch you get. Lastly, we're making it even easier for people to discover and download your Wear OS apps when they open Google Play. We've added a new watch face search filter and category pages, allowing people to browse specifically for watch faces. We'll also be introducing Wear OS specific ratings and reviews to give users a better impression of the experience on a watch. Finally, we're making our biggest ever investment in our large screens, such as foldables, tablets, and Chrome OS. We're incredibly excited about the innovation happening on foldables. They're redefining the future of mobile devices with new models from partners like Samsung, Microsoft, Xiaomi, and Motorola. Microsoft. We've seen more than a two and a half increase in device sales this year, and it's easy to see why. Foldables put the power of a tablet right in your pocket. Speaking of tablets, usage in the home and at work has transformed in recent years, with an almost 20% increase in tablet sales that has continued throughout 2021. Users are doing more than ever on tablets, spending almost 10% more time Para than they did in 2019. Los van a en Chrome OS grew 92% mm, bueno, year over year, igual, la, la making it the fastest growing desktop OS in the world. <laughs> With over 250 million active large screen devices, it's so important to ensure your app works across any size screen in any orientation. Large screen UIs present an opportunity to extend your existing phone app so users can see and do more. This is important for our own apps, such as Google Photos. We updated the Google Photos app to work well on large screens and saw an improvement in daily active users by as much as 53% for key features. It's time to break away from designing for a 16 by 9 portrait phone app and start building hecho, UI responsibly. Fi de, de to help with that, we're releasing new features la, to make it easier for you to support large screens. Atrás. Adopting Pero Compose no, is a perfect opportunity to make your UI fully adapted. All UIs are described in code, and it's easy to make decisions at runtime about how your UI should look. No more reliance on resource qualifiers. We are releasing Material U navigation component support and o sea, implementations que no of large screen layouts and sample apps to help you understand how modern UI development should scale across screen sizes. We've heard from you that knowing no what screen todo, sizes to develop and horrible. design for is hard. So our new window size classes are an opinionated set of viewport breakpoints that will tell you what sizes are the most common from phone to foldable tablet o sea, lo cual and implica que si tú estás You'll see these con size post, classes across our design guidance ya, bueno, ahí está, and as eh, APIs ah, mira, in Jetpack Window Manager 1.1. You'll also see new no, reference si devices in Android Studio that make it easy for you to develop against all combinations of window size classes. There are many more updates Tengo from support de que se van for a ver new horrible. features like Las rear camera selfies in Jetpack Window Manager 1.1 <laughs> to added testing capabilities <laughs> and cradle managed device testing in studio. Let's see how it all works in practice. To see how our app looks on larger screens, I'm going to switch to the new resizable emulator. Nick, eh, Nick this makes it easy to toggle between different display de, sizes de, without de, having de. to juggle multiple emulators. Oh my gosh. Looking at serio, our app on ya trae or no la había visto. tablet, we're not taking Pero aquí justamente vemos, ¿no? Si una aplicación que no esté adaptada yes, se va a ver así. Material Design offers a number of adaptive design patterns that can work for us. Let's switch our bottom navigation bar to the navigation rail on larger screens to make it easier to reach. Also, I think we can use the list detail view pattern on the front screen to show more at once. Compose, combined with Jetpack Window Manager, makes it easy to observe the device's window size class or folded state. I can then update my UI in response. 
For example, I've created a top level scaffold to switch between showing bottom navigation bar on narrow screens and the navigation rail on wider screens. We can check the window size class and arrange things with rows or columns accordingly. We can show the friends list and the friends detail composables side by side in the expanded width state. We can even animate this change simply by animating the weight given to each pane. Composables encourage you to create reusable pieces of UI that are easier to rearrange or combine at runtime using Kotlin control flow. It's also much easier for individual composables to respond to the space they're given, like this screen, which switches from a list to a grid of sliders on wider screens. I've got an idea for how we can take advantage of foldable screens here. We can observe the folded state, and in tabletop mode, we can reposition our UI to work best in this posture. Check it out, Yaz. Looks great. Moving our interactive components to the bottom of the screen will ensure we can make changes without toppling over the device on the tabletop. I can't stop folding and unfolding this. Now back over to you, Diana, to expand on large screens. When developers have adapted their apps to fill the entire screen and be fully resizable, we've seen users spend more time in the app. Zoom has taken advantage of tabletop mode on foldables for hands-free video games and are working to optimize their UI fully for split-screen usage and larger layouts on foldables and tablets. But with all the work developers are doing for large screens, you need an OS to match. So we're going big. Today, we're releasing a developer preview of an upcoming feature drop for Android 12, with updates added just for large screens. We call it 12L. We've been working with developers like you to understand what APIs you need and upstreaming changes from device makers that users love. 12L includes an API bump with a redesign of the OS for large screens, added multitasking okay, support este... and updated compatibility modes to make o your sea, app work better on large una, una out of the box. Let's take a closer look. We've redesigned este Android UI largas, from the ground up for large L. screens, scaling the UI to work with any screen size, including larger tablets. An optimized home screen layout, updated lock screen, optimizado. and a two-column notification no shape al... are just some of the examples of how we OS. elegantly transition from a folded exterior screen to a larger interior screen on a foldable. Users tell us they love multitasking on larger displays, from using split screen to doing more in apps. But we know that getting into split screen is not super discoverable today. So we've added a new taskbar to make multitasking easier than ever. Now you can use the taskbar to switch quickly between apps, drag and drop to enter split screen, and swipe up to go back mm -hmm. to home. We've also added more ways to enter split screen from the overview. In addition, we're helping users by automatically enabling all apps to enter split screen or multi-window mode, regardless of whether they're resizable. Creo Even if you have yet to invest in optimizing for large screens, we've updated app compatibility modes on Android and Chrome OS. We've improved the user experience and we've en el beta. the device's orientation letterboxing apps which don't support resizing or both portrait and landscape. With all of these changes, you should expect to see an increase in split screen usage and your app being used in windows of varying sizes. So it's important to make sure your app can adapt to this seamlessly. We're also making it simpler for apps to take advantage of the extra screen space, even if your existing application architecture still relies on multiple activities. With activity embedding coming in 12L and Jetpack Window Manager 1.1, you'll be able to display multiple activities side by side, so you don't have to re-architect your app to support list detail or other multi-pane app layouts. We're committed to making it easier to support large screen layouts through the platform and Jetpack. We've put so many features into the Android 12L feature drop. We encourage you to check it out in our developer preview dropping today on our emulator. Mm -hmm. For foldables, you'll see many of these features, including activity embedding, coming soon to the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. On tablets, you'll soon be able to load the developer preview on the Lenovo P12 Pro. Take a look as we gear up for public release in early 2022. We see this as a huge step forward in our support for foldables and tablets, and we'll incorporate more features for large screens into our regular releases moving forward. 
to make it o sea, easier for people que, to find the best app experiences, con ese, con we've got new changes in play to recommend apps optimized for the large screen. This includes new checks to assess app quality so we can feature large screen optimized apps and update search rankings to show the best possible apps for these devices. We'll also be introducing large screen specific app ratings so users can rate how your app works on large screens. These changes are coming in the spring, so we're giving you advance notice to get your apps ready now. Okay, there's so much for large screens. Let's do a quick recap. Available now are a bunch of developer APIs and tools to help you optimize your app for the 250 million large screen devices we have today. We're also dropping the developer preview of 12L features on the emulator. Okay. You can download it now to explore how your app will look with our upcoming updates. Soon, you'll be able to test out these features on real devices like the Lenovo P12 Pro and the Fold 3. And finally, 12L and Play Store updates will begin to ship to consumers in 2022. So get ready for the next wave of foldable and tablet devices. Okay, tenemos, We're excited tenemos about this as the future año. of the Android mm -hmm. ecosystem. But bueno, the best no, part of no this is that so much of this applies to devices available right now. Expand how you're thinking about extending your app to the larger screen, try the new APIs and tools, and check out the 12L features to help you bring your app to foldables and tablets today. That's all we've got time for today on the Android Show. But we've covered a lot from Material U, now available in Compose, to Android 12, a brand new developer preview of Android for large screens and foldables. Want to learn more? You can read more at developer.android.com. So the Android show is winding down, but the Android Developer Summit is just getting started. We've just dropped over 30 technical sessions of Android developer content. So you can dig in at your own pace. Over the next few days, you've got a lot coming at you, including your opportunity to get your hashtag Ask Android Questions Answered, live with the experts who built Android. Thanks for tuning in to The Android Show. I'm Carrie Byron. Now, if you'll excuse me. You can't talk. <laughs> Take that. Yeah. Woohoo. Bueno, 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 bueno. I command you to get accepted. Y eso fue todo. <clears throat> O sea, y ya, vamos a que más hay. Hey everyone, I'm Tor Norby from the Android Studio team. And I'm Jamal, also from the Android Studio team. And today we're going to walk through what's new in the Android developers tool space. Ya, eso lo, lo vemos luego. Bueno, eso ya lo voy a ver después porque ahora tengo que estar aprovechando la hora del almuerzo para poder este, conectarme. Pero no, no vieron, en mi opinión, no vieron muchos anuncios en realidad, salvo lo de Android 12, por ahí una que otra experiencia que soltaron sobre algunos experts, pero nada que, nada que quien no haya estado al pendiente de todo esto lo haya visto antes. Uh, por ahí quizás este poco del tema de tooling y todo el asunto, pero más allá de eso, esperaba quizás algo realmente novedoso, pero nuevamente, ¿no? Quizás sea porque constantemente estamos leyendo los artículos, constantemente estamos este, al pendiente de estas cosas, y es por eso que mucho de lo que se habla o se ha hablado durante la keynote, pues, no significó wow, una sorpresa, ¿no? Como tal. Lo que sí, por lo visto, si quieres una, eh, construir una aplicación masiva y todo el asunto, pues vamos a tener que conseguirnos un foldable. Sí o sí. Aunque con el emulador debería ser este, suficiente. Aunque, bueno, vamos a ver cómo, cómo nos va con eso. De ahí, bueno, hay que seguir repotenciando potenciando el tema de aprender Compose. Muchas aplicaciones van a tener que migrar a esto eventualmente. Y, pues... Nuevamente, en ese sentido, lo que recomiendo sí es um, tratar de irle por, por aplicar, o sea, Clean Architecture como de lugar, o sea, básicamente separar las cosas en capas, poder este, controlar eventos, estados en nuestras pantallas, 
unidireccional data flow, ahí entra esto, y tener como los componentes bastante bien atomizados, que inclusive generando una, una galería de componentes, eso es algo que se va a necesitar. Y eso acompañado del concepto de, de atomic design, ¿no? Con eso pueden sentar las bases de una buena migración, creo yo, desde las aplicaciones actuales a Compose como tal, ¿no? Si es que quieren hacerlo de una forma ordenada y que no suponga tampoco un cambio muy drástico, ¿no? Para poder este, implementar todo esto. Bueno, pues yo me, me despido. Fue un gusto poder estar aquí con todos ustedes. Y después de mucho tiempo, en realidad, después de una larga pausa, espero poder retomar los lives los fines de semana de manera más seguida porque hay mucho que que ir practicando nuevamente. Ya saben que en mi caso eh, me gusta mucho practicar y descubriendo cositas y todo este asunto. Espero poder tenerlo un poco más ordenado, ordenado todo esto. Y pues ya, nos estamos viendo en otra oportunidad. Muchísimas gracias a todos los que estuvieron aquí. Y conmigo será hasta la próxima. Chao, chao.